I'm installing the first major software update for the Astro, and it looks remote ID ready. Imagine you're a logger headed out into the forest to cut a tree down, but your chainsaw keeps asking to calibrate it. Frustrating, right? It seems like FreeFly has a little sense of humor and some irony with the announcement of the major software update for the Astro, because back in February, there was a logging issue which would cause uh, Astro in certain scenarios to crash. FreeFly may have a solution for a lot of the frustrations that I've had with the Astro since its launch. Please excuse the mess. My office is a disaster because we've been moving over the last two weeks and I have not unpacked or had time to set up the office yet. But with the first major software update for the Astro since its launch, we have to make a video. Welcome back to the channel where I'm on a quest to find suitable non-DGI drones to replace our fleet. If you're new here, thanks for watching. Please consider hitting subscribe and like or comment. I'm trying to raise awareness about the non-DGI drones and getting suitable replacements for our DGI fleet. I need to make a big shout out to Ryan. He sent me a new microphone, so hopefully all my audio woes are gone. Admittedly, I am horrible at audio and so I'm learning as I go. But Ryan, thank you. I really appreciate your generosity. Today's all about Astro's version 1.2 firmware update and the AMC software update. With this update, FreeFly has introduced a bunch of improvements and new features. So let's start with the big high level things. There's a new flight mode called compassless flight mode. There's improvements to the camera, the gimbal, and payload screens inside of AMC. Mission planning has gotten better. The FreeFly Wiki for the version 1.2 update starts off with the compassless flight mode. Compassless flight mode? Yeah, not the easiest thing to say. They're saying it increases confidence and precision in difficult operating environments. Now, I've needed something like this in the past, uh, flying from bridge decks that have rebar steel infrastructure around them, or an open face mine that has rock with a lot of mineral deposits in the rock. You can have compass interference in both those situations. So the ability to take off kind of in a manual mode, wait for GPS to lock onto your heading, switch back to position mode and continue your mission is very useful. Um, it's not something I'll probably use every day in mapping missions, but it's nice to know that if you ever need it, it'll be there. It's gonna be enabled by default on all Astro drones running version 1.2 and later. On the improvement side, onto the flight performance, FreeFly's made some tweaks to how the drone will perform. They've improved the GPS lock thresholds, supposedly increasing navigational accuracy, and they've increased the rate you can descend in position mode from 2.5 meters a second to three. FreeFly has also refined some of the tuning around yaw hold and smoother flight. The wiki also mentions the Astro is gonna solely rely on the barometer versus fusing with GPS, which will reduce some precision, but supposedly be more reliable. But are all these improvements gonna be noticeable in real world conditions? We're gonna find out. I'm not gonna be able to fly right now. The weather has been horrible for days and I've got a couple more days of bad weather. But I was able to install the firmware and we're gonna go through a lot of it. I'll cover on the here link what has changed and hopefully I'll be able to come back with another video update in a week or so after I've had some time to really put the Astro through its paces with the new version 1.2. The AMC software update for the here link includes a redesigned planning screen. Photo spacing has also been optimized and you can now import export missions as well as import KML. Importing KML has probably been the biggest challenge on my workflow since getting the Astro mapping. So far, we've had to put the here link in hotspot mode, put our laptop on the hotspot, plan with KML on our laptop, upload it to the Astro, download it to the here link so we could fly just using the here link. Um, but if you needed to make changes to your mission, all you have on the here link at that point is waypoints. You don't have the full mission like you drew it up on the laptop. So it's been a hassle to say the least. Uh, one of the things I'm also curious about that's not mentioned in this update is resuming missions and resuming at the original speed. So far, Astro, if I have a multi-flight mission, when I land, change batteries and send it back, it's going from whatever speed I've programmed the mission to to what I believe is the default speed of 22.4 miles an hour. So 
I'd be very curious if that mission resume functionality has been improved with a software update. The MC planning app also now has the option for 50 millimeter lenses. So if you're doing inspection work, a 50 millimeter lens could probably be very useful. The AMC fly screen has also been redesigned. There's also now a focus area, which I'm assuming is gonna give us ability to control what the camera is focusing on. Real-time gimbal tilt indicator. We can adjust the gimbal speed. Uh, adjusting gimbal speed is something I've kind of wanted to be able to do for a while. Truly didn't have a hardcore need for it while mapping, but the ability to move the gimbal faster or slower is a nice touch that I think will be welcomed. One of the other mentions is about the photo speed no longer being capped at two seconds. So when planning, you've had to make sure your photo spacing was at least being triggered greater than two seconds. So it'll be interesting to see if we can trigger faster than two seconds now, uh, which is what it looks like. That could be really useful for flying lower missions or for missions where you want a detailed 3D model and you want more photos. EX Fat is listed as a new feature. However, I'm saying that's a bug fix. The original FreeFly Wiki said that EX Fat was the supported format for the USB thumb drive. However, if you tried that, you know it didn't work. I helped a lot of people that were on Facebook groups and Reddit forums trying to add a thumb drive or it accidentally formatted their thumb drive and it was driving them nuts that they couldn't get it to work again. Um, and it was just a format issue. One of the other bugs that were fixed in this release is switching from photo to video. You would always get a mode switch failed error message. That's been resolved. You could always record video. It just didn't seem like you could because it would throw an error that it failed to switch modes, but it looks like that's been resolved as well. Okay, so here we're in the download section for my Arterian Suite. You see I have the updated version of Arterian Mission Control I can download. On the firmware tab, I can download the latest firmware for the Astro. Okay, so I'm browsing to the SkyNode on the Astro. This is basically the flight controller. The update process is pretty straightforward. You browse to the firmware on your hard drive, select it, and then hit update. You can see it's uploading the firmware to the SkyNode on the Astro. This process takes a couple of minutes and then the SkyNode will update to the new version of the firmware. An interesting thing I noticed after the update is if I go back to the SkyNode, there's an option in there for remote ID. And if you check it, it warns you that you will not be able to turn it off. So it looks like the Astro is ready for remote ID and has it implemented on the SkyNode. That's something I want to put a little bit of testing into here shortly, but it'll be after I work on the main core features for 1.2 and just flying and making sure that the Astro works as it should. But stay tuned, I'll do another video on the remote ID with the Astro after I do some flight testing. Immediately upon powering on the here link and it connecting to my Wi-Fi, it sees there's an update available. I'm going to tell it I want to update. It's going to download the update. Downloading the update took a while, so we'll fast forward a bit. After it's downloaded the update, I'm going to hit the update button so it'll install the update. After it finished downloading the update, it rebooted to actually install the update. Beginning to end, it took approximately 20 minutes for that to complete. Once it's complete and the reboot comes up, AMC launches and goes through an initial setup again. I'm not going to demo every single feature that's new in this OS, so I have some for the next video where I'm actually operating the Astro but I am going to cover planning out using KML as that's been one of the biggest challenges I've had with the here link. My first attempt at planning a mission from KML failed because the documentation on the FreeFly Wiki had an incorrect location of where to store the KML on the here link device but FreeFly support was able to get me the proper location and update their wiki pretty quickly. All right, so we're looking at the HereLink controller and we're gonna import a KML to design our mission from. So let me unlock the HereLink. We're launching the AMC app here. All right, we have the AMC app up and running. So I have an SD card in the bottom of the here link that has my KML on it. So I'm gonna to get to it by swiping downward. 
I'm going to go to my SD card here. And then I have the KML just listed as Astro Test and the root. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit the three dots and say I want to copy. Now I need to put this in the Optimus drive inside of Documents, Tyrion Mission Control, and then inside of Missions. So I'm going to copy it there. Now I can go back to Iterium Mission Control. Now once I'm in here, I'm going to start and plan a mission like normal. So I'm going to go to the plan screen. All right, and we're going to pick the little box over here and pick survey. Now it's loading up initially and you have this option for load KML slash shapefile. So I'm going to hit that. Astro test now shows up in the menu list. And I can hit delete from there if I want to delete the file. Otherwise, if I tap it, it's going to zoom into it with some default mission parameters here. So uh, the default flight speed that is pulling up is 29.6 miles an hour, which is a touch fast for me. Um, so let's just say I slow this down to about 20 miles an hour. And then I can set my normal overlap side lap setting. So I could do say 70, 70 if I wanted. And it is ramping up the speed pretty quickly there. I'm going to slow that down just a touch. All right. So this says time 20 minutes to fly that. I've got it set for a uh, decent size project there in that KML. Um, altitude 350 AGL, let's drag that up. All right, let's just type in here 390. All right, at 390 feet AGL, I have a feeling it adjusted my speed. Yeah, back to almost 40 miles an hour. I think that's a bit too fast, but that's just me. All right, so we're back to 18 minutes for this flight. And I can basically save this off now if I'm happy with this. All right, so I saved that mission off. So now if I power on the Astro, I could go to the fly screen, upload it, or if I shut down the here link, I could reopen this mission. Okay, so we're in the fly screen here. There's a few things that look a little different, but we're gonna go into the settings. By default, the gimbal angle indicator is not on, so we're gonna turn that on. And it says my gimbal in the upper right hand corner here is negative 12 degrees. Negative is pointing upwards towards the aircraft. So positive is gonna be down, negative is gonna be up. The gimbal speed is on normal by default, which is kind of slow if you've used the Astro mapping uh, before. If you turn it up to fast, it does indeed move a bit faster. I would say it's about twice as fast. I like that, I'm gonna leave that there. All right, I don't have storage connected to the Astro right now. I'm gonna insert the Astro's thumb drive into the USB-C port and see if it picks up on those changes. All right, I've inserted the storage into the Astro. Let's see if it picked up on the changes. A little yellow indicator went away from the preferences over here. So now it tells you the available storage is 80.58 gigabytes. Um, so that's much better that you can see that right from here. Um, would like a way to format it from the Astro. Uh, that's one of the things I like to do in pre-flight checks is format my storage because if the storage is faulty, it will often fail on a format, and that helps me before I go out on a flight. That was a lot to unpack, and I didn't cover it all. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Again, please consider hitting subscribe and like if you enjoy this. I hope to be able to fly the Astro a bit this week and test out all the features. But until next time, thank you for watching.